The first thing you'll notice when you open SPSS is the welcome window. This welcome window has different sections. We have the new data set and new database query, and we have the what's new section where they announce, they normally make announcements of what's new in this version. I'm using IBM SPSS statistics version 26. So as a beginner, the new dataset section is what we'll use to enter our data for statistical analysis. So you make sure that the new dataset area is highlighted and then you press the open button. What that does is that it opens two more windows. The dataset window, as you can see, this is the dataset window and the output window. This is the output window. The dataset window is where we enter our data and when we enter our data, we'll view it in the data view. But before entering the data, we enter our variables in the variable view. So this is the variable view and this is the data view. And then after we perform statistical analysis or we enter data into SPSS, and instructed to perform statistical analysis. All that data is displayed in the output section. So remember, SPSS has two windows, the data set window and the output window. In the data set window, we have the data view. This is where your data is displayed and we have the variable view where you enter different variables. The data view will be made up of columns representing the different variables and rows representing the different entities involved in a study. The rows represent the entities, the columns represent the variables. To help you understand what variables are and what entities are, let's say we examine the performance of students in a statistic test. And then we have both male and female students. Of course, in a class, we have both male and female students. And we have different students like 10 students with different names. So for example, we can have Bernard as a student. Then we can have Jane. Then we can have John. Then we can have Mercy. As we can see, the different entries of the students are presented in the rows. But these students can have different variables. For example, M for male. This one is female. F for female. This one is male. M for male, and this one is female, F for female. Those are the different variables. Also, their names differ. Their names vary. So their names are in the variables column. Remember, in SPSS, we put the variables in the columns, the different entities involved in research in the rows. So let's go to the variable view. In the variable view window, you will notice that there are different names or there are different labels in the different columns. For example, we have the name, the type, the width, decimals, label, values, missing, columns, align, measure, role. So when you're entering data into SPSS, you don't first enter the data before defining your variables. So always go to the variable view section. The first step after you open SPSS and then click on the new data set section is to go to the variable view and clearly define your variables. Let's look at an example. The data below shows the score out of 20 for different students, some of whom are male and some female, and some of whom were taught using positive reinforcement, being nice, and others who are taught using punishment, electric shock. Enter this data into SPSS and save the file as method of teaching. To enter this data into SPSS, the first thing we would consider is the different variables. Here we have the gender variable, which is the first variable because we have male and female. And then we have the methods of teaching variable, which is electric shock or being nice. So let's enter this data into SPSS. So the first variable we have is the gender variable. The type of variables includes numeric, comma, dot, scientific notation, date, dollar, custom currency, string, and restricted numeric variables. As a beginner, you mainly use numeric and string variables. Numeric variables in numbers and string are variables in words. So although gender is a string variable per se, because we have either male or female, what we'll do is we code it using numbers, as we'll see later. First, we'll ignore the width, 
because the width is simply the thickness of a column in the data view section then decimals of course gender doesn't have decimals we fill that with zero label we have said male or female students that's the label of our variable remember when filling out variables in SPSS, always provide a detailed description in the label section because actually SPSS relies on your labels to make sense of the data and presents your labels in the output section. So the better labels you have, the more sense you're going to make of your data. Values is a section we'll also rely on significantly, especially when coding different variables. We have said that gender is a numeric variable. We will rely on the numeric variable of gender. So what do we mean by this? That we are going to assign different numeric values to represent each gender. So one, will be male, then we press add, then two will be female. So every time we see one, we're gonna know it's male, and every time we see two, we're gonna know it's female students. Then we have missing, we are gonna leave it at that, no missing data. Columns, columns we ignore right now, align we also ignore, measure, very important. What is the measure of our variable? Gender, gender is a nominal variable. Nominal variables include variables that cannot exist in a certain degree or in a certain scale or in a certain degree. For example, you cannot be 3.5 male and 3.6 female. You are either male or female fully. That's a nominal variable. So that's gender. Let's go back to our question and see another variable. The, another, the second variable we have is the method of teaching. Either electric shock or being nice which represents positive reinforcement. Remember, when entering variable names into SPSS, there are some rules you should follow. Do not use special characters such as dollar sign, hash. Do not use numbers in the beginning and also do not use spaces in your words. So for spaces, I normally use underscore. For example, methods underscore of underscore teaching underscore, as you can see, which is a valid name for SPSS variables. Our second variable is electric shock. This one will also be a numeric variable. Remember the scores don't have a decimal place, so we put zero. So we label it as scores of male and female students taught using punishment. And that is the electric shock group. Values, again, we will ignore the values because the scores are in numeric form already. Then missing, we have no missing scores. Columns leave that we're gonna ignore that for now align we're gonna ignore that let's go to the measure measure we choose the scale measure why a scale is a level of measurement that have a real zero a student can get zero marks in an examination and also can get maybe 50 out of 50 or 100 out of 100 so that's a scale measure again let's go to the third variable in our case which is being underscore nice remember no special characters in your variable names always use an underscore to separate different words and also do not begin your names with numbers again it's a numeric variable type wind we leave it decimals scores have zero decimals for our case again here we have the scores of male and female students taught using positive reinforcement that is our label values none missing none we leave it columns we leave it align we leave it then come to the measure it's a scale why because a student can get a zero or can get all the marks in an examination so we rely on scale so we have filled all our variables and we have clearly defined them we have given them the right labels and the right names and the right types of measurement including nominal and scale so we can go to our data view now you can see we have the different variables in the different columns let me extend this you can extend this here or in the variable view for example if you enter the variable view and entered these values 12 12 they will just extend the columns so we have the first variable is gender and we have the second variable is electric shock and being nice. Now, if you consider our students, 
we have five male students and five female students so if you remember how we coded our gender we put the values of one to represent male and two to represent female so when we are entering the data every time we have male we will put one one you can see it's male one one five male students and if we were to enter female we just enter two female two female two female two female two female that is five female students for our data we have five male students and five female students now if we wanted the labels as codes not as names we use this button here to toggle the value labels let's click on it and see what will happen when we click it the codes that we use for each gender are revealed for example for the male gender we have one for the female gender we have two you can decide to display them as words male or female or as codes one and two for each gender now we have our second variable which is electric shock let's enter the data for electric shock we can see for the male students we have 15 14 20 13 and 13 that is electric shock the scores that the student obtained through electric shock we also have electric shock for female students here we have six seven five four and eight that is data for electric shock we also have data for being nice we start with male students that is 10 9 8 8 7 we also have the data for being nice for female students the data for being nice for female students that is 12 10 7 8 13 so that's our data and these are our different variables we have gender as a variable which is male or female electric shock as a variable which is the scores that either male or female students obtain when taught using punishment being nice which is the scores in which either male or female students obtain when taught using positive reinforcement are you getting value from this video help another person like you get the same value by liking and subscribing to this channel thank you that's how you enter data into spss how to conduct descriptive statistics in spss when you fill out the right labels in SPSS, you can easily conduct descriptive statistics. You can highlight a column, for example, the electric shock variable. Right click and click on descriptive statistics and you'll see what SPSS does here. So this is our analysis. Scores of male and female students taught using punishment. It's good to use very elaborate labels in SPSS because SPSS uses your labels in data analysis and also in presenting your results so you can see clearly here that spss uses my label of scores of male and female students taught using punishment so the average scores of both male and female students taught using punishment in our experiment is 10.50 this is the average score and the median is 10.50 with a standard deviation of 5.5 Two, three, three. We have a range of 16, the range between the scores with the minimum being 4 and the maximum getting 20 out of 20. Now, let's perform descriptive statistics on the second variable which is being nice. Again, you can right click and press descriptive statistics. We can see the scores of male and female students taught using positive reinforcement. The scores are 10 valid scores and zero missing we have a mean of 9.20 a median of 8.50 and a standard deviation of 2.044 a range of six a minimum of seven so we can see that the scores of male and female students using positive reinforcement have a 9.20 mean which is a lower mean compared to the scores of students taught using punishment so that's how you perform discrete statistics in spss